Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Um, so this is part two of Wizard93. And um, in the first video, I talked about my, my big project and explained kind of like why it's, you know, I'm not sharing it yet because it's not ready, unfortunately. I thought it would be, but it's not. But anyway, we'll just um, jump right in. So um, we're talking about Batman. And uh, they're talking about the Batman 5 movie because they're still talking about it in 1999 because, of course, the last movie before this one was um, <laughs> Batman and Robin in 1997, which, you know, um, <laughs> it was definitely way more campy than, you know, Batman um, and then Batman, you know, Returns, Batman um, Forever. It definitely way more campy. And people kind of blame, you know, the cast, but it, the cast, it's not entirely their fault because the movie, you know, was written in a certain way. So you can't, you can't totally, completely just blame the cast on that, which, you know, I, I mean, like, I'll watch that movie again. I've seen it before and I'll watch it again. It's not one that I'll never watch again, but yeah, it's definitely not like the best Batman movie. So basically, they're still reeling from that <laughs> movie. So they're saying, oh, well, we'll get a Superman, another Superman movie before that ever happens, which, you know, this is 1999. Um, so <laughs> the uh, last Superman movie was, of course, uh, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace with Christopher Reeve. Um, and that was 1987. So, yeah, Superman was due for another movie. Um, yeah, they just thought after that seriously terrible Batman movie, well, it was terribly received, that, yeah, Superman's going to get a movie before um, Batman gets a movie again. So, it, but, you know, and of course there was the whole um, Nicolas Cage Superman playing Superman rumor at the time. I mean, it wasn't just a rumor. Like, it seemed like it was really going to happen. So he, they were pretty confident in saying, yeah, Superman will get a movie before Batman. But that was not the case because Batman had his uh, new movie um, in 2005. And then Superman got another one in 2006. And that was, um, like, Superman Returns with Brandon Routh, which... I liked him as Superman. I thought he did a great job. Um, th there were some issues for me with the script and how Superman was portrayed. Uh, a lot of it I didn't agree with, but, you know, I mean, you know, I still think he did a good job with the script material that he was given. And I thought it was fun for in the Arrowverse to see him play a different alternate version of Superman. So... You know, he got to go back to his Superman roots. And then, um, you know, and then we didn't get another Superman movie until, nine, until Man of Steel. So, really, you know, Batman's gotten a lot more movies than Superman recently. I mean, Superman got four, you know, in the, like, 78 and then the 80s. But since then, he's gotten, what, two? You know, Superman Returns and... um is it Superman Returns? I think it is. Um, and then, it, you know, Man of Steel, and that's it. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, they're talking about that. Oh, and um, if you... They're talking also about No Man's Land, the huge um, Batman story that, you know, is a whole year-long event. And if you want to learn more about that, I talked about it in the Wizard um, 89 video. I believe it's the first one. So... And they're guessing who um, the new Batgirl is. And if you've seen that video, you know that these are all wrong. Because <laughs> I told you who the new Batman, Bat, Batgirl was, sorry. Um, they guessed uh, Detective Renee Montoya. And they said two to one. Um, and then Lieutenant Sarah Gordon, four to one. I mean, they said she's in her 40s. She can still, you know, she's still in shape. Um, you know, basically Commissioner Gordon's wife. <laughs> They're saying four to one odds for that. Um, Huntress, you know, she's always looking to prove herself to Batman. So they said, you know, five to one. Oracle, who used to be Batgirl, um, 
And they're saying, well, she's a tech whiz now. She could, you know, whip up some prosthetic legs or something to help herself fight crime. And I did talk about what happens to um, Barbara Gordon um, in the other video that I did on Batman No Man's Land. Um, Catwoman, they're like, yeah, it's a stretch. But um, she, you know, she really likes Batman. She'll, you know, do whatever she needs to to basically please him. <laughs> so... Um, and then, like I said, they're just kind of goopy. And then they uh, put on here last Gary Coleman is the new Batgirl. Odds, you know, like a million to one. Like, you know, they're just goopy. <laughs> okay. And so they talked about also the Batman Beyond TV series, which I really liked. You know, where Terry McGinnis was the new Batman and um, Bruce Wayne was like his mentor. And they did um, in comic books, they've incorporated. Uh, Batman Beyond as a alternate dimension, a possible future, and then like an alternate timeline where like Tim Drake gets transported to that timeline or universe dimension, something like that. <laughs> and he becomes the new Batman in Batman Beyond instead of Terry McGinnis because Terry McGinnis gets killed. So he works with Terry, the brother, in order to, you know, become Batman. Anyway, so, and they talked about, there were rumors of Batman the Musical, uh, and everyone's like, oh, please, no. But they actually, someone actually did make a Batman the Musical. I looked it up, because I didn't know this. Um, March, like, 2012, and it ran for, like, three days, and then they put the, re you know, then they put it up on YouTube. So I will, I will have to actually see if I can find that, because I'm kind of curious as to, like, how that would work. <laughs> Okay, so this next article, I I totally know that I skipped over this when I was a kid because I was like, well, I don't understand what this is about. It doesn't make sense. But I read this article now, and I'm like, this is so cool. So, of course, the Spider-Man Spider -Man didn't get a movie until, like, uh, 2002. You know, of course, Tobey Maguire. Um, so, but this is talking about the real Spider-Man. So what happened is... Marvel, um, this guy was paid by Marvel to basically appear, you know, in public as Spider-Man at all their appearances. So 1,400 appearances and counting at, you know, the time of this article. And he's been to, you know, Canada, Japan, um, France. Um, he, of course, you know, here in the States a ton. And um, he would appear at department stores their toy section that was his first appearance and he goes to children's hospitals and schools and visits them and uh, talks about important topics because he has a minor in education they wouldn't tell us like they would not tell us his name because it's a secret they said he um has like an actor model had short reoccurring roles on a couple of soap operas um he has minor in elementary education i tried to look this up and find out who he is on the internet but you know since <laughs> since there's been a spider-man movie multiple spider-man movies and he's such a popular character there's and there's all kinds of you know videos about him and people cosplaying as him and doing like really cool stunts as him i could not find who this really was but he said he of um, answered an ad that was put in a backstage magazine in 19, I think 70, 79, 78, somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly. Um, and because Marvel was looking for actors to play, um, portray their characters, you know, in, um, you know, appearances. So he answered the ad and they liked how he moved in the suit and liked his um, personality, you know, when he was pretending to be Spider-Man. Um, and he's actually, it's a 6'2", 200 pounds, which Spider-Man's usually more like 5'10", 160. Like, I feel like Spider-Man is, you know, he's, like, he's athletic, but he's not, like, I'm trying to think of how to put this. He's not, like, a bodybuilder athlete or a football player, you know? He's, he has a, a more slender build. But, you know, Marvel, um, they're not always, like, true to source material in terms of their characters. I mean, 
as much as, you know, of course, I love Hugh Jackman being Wolverine. I mean, who doesn't? Well, okay, there are people that don't. But, <laughs> um, y- you know, now he's played him for like 23 years now. Anyway, so he's, you know, 6'3". Wolverine's supposed to be like 5'3". Like, just a little bit taller than me, basically. Um, and, of course, they didn't do that in the movies because they couldn't find someone. It d- wouldn't translate, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, so Marvel doesn't always, isn't always true to the source material. But I just thought that was a really cool article. He just talks about how much fun he has. And he says he enjoys um, visiting the hospitals and appearances with kids the most because, you know, he, he loves kids. And he actually worked with the National Child Abuse, um, I think, Foundation to come up with a 20-minute, like, public service announcement, like, um, sketch that he could do at schools for the kids um, because uh, he said a lot of times in the article, a lot of times that the kids wouldn't tell the teachers because, of course, the teachers are supposed to look out for signs that kids have been abused and such, but he said a lot of times they wouldn't tell the teachers because they didn't feel comfortable enough sharing with them, but they would come up to him afterwards and say, this is what's going on with me because, you know, he's Spider-Man because like, he's someone like that they, they know and they feel like they can trust him because, you know, he's a hero. So I just thought that was a really cool article, like a really cool thing. Like I, you know, how cool would it be to get, to be paid to be Spider-Man or another comic book character. I mean, yeah, it'd be even cooler to like portray them in the movies, but how cool would it be just to get paid to be them? I mean, you know, out in public and that's what he did. Like he, whenever he's in the Spider-Man suit, he is Spider-Man. Like he doesn't, you know, deviate from that character ever. So I just, I just thought that was a really cool article. Like I, oh, and it also mentions um, Italy went to Italy on an appearance so I just thought that was really cool like really cool article one that I skipped over when I was a kid okay so they're talking about their must their most wanted cartoons that they want to see um because there's rumors that the um Avengers were getting a new were getting their own cartoon which we'll talk about that in a second so they want to see a Justice League um, cartoon, which that did happen in 2001, um, Justice League ran for two seasons, and then Justice League Unlimited for three, um, and then, of course, they've had all, like, tons of movies, like, DC does animated movies so well, I, I think, I mean, I think it's just way easier to do superhero stuff in animation to tell that story, because, um, like, okay, for example, in Civil War, um, you know, Captain America Civil War, it, it was like this huge, huge thing in the comics, huge storyline, you know, hun- like not hundreds, but, you know, almost hundreds of characters were pitted against each other at different sides. And in the movie, you had like, like four or five and four and five and So, but, like, that's just to say that they're limited in what they can do in live action. In, in, you know, in a sense. Like, they can't do all these characters. And they can't, um, with animation, they can put out a lot of more content, more movies. And they can explore characters more and further because they have the option to do another movie. But with you know, the huge big name blockbuster movies, you know, they have such a huge budget that it's not like they can just do one right after the other and just continue for them to be like a huge success. And I mean, (laughs) that's part of the thing like that's going on today is that people are saying that, you know, there's such a thing as superhero fatigue. And I think part of that is because of COVID. Like I used to go and see, um, superhero movies in theaters like opening weekend or at least opening week like every single time and now you know because of COVID I've gotten out of the habit and so maybe I see like two a year in theaters I mean (laughs) which is not that good but just I don't know I just got out of the habit and now they 
they stream in, you know, your house and it's just more, I guess, convenient, easier just to do it that way. Like we just got all the habit, but I still love going to the movies, but, and also sometimes like I don't have anyone to go with. So, and I don't want to go to the movies by myself. I've done that before, but I'd rather not go to the movies by myself. (laughs) And, um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, just sometimes it's hard to coordinate everyone's schedules and stuff. So anyway, Danger Girl, that was popular at the time because it just came out like the year before, 1998. And um, no, it never got a cartoon. <laughs> it was very, um, you know, it's had like mini series throughout the years. I think the last one was like 2015. If I mean, I could be mistaken, but it's not like been a huge driving, you know, ongoing monthly title um, comic book or anything. Um, Blade. <laughs> He did get a animated series, um, like 2011, I think. Um, and it was an anime. I never saw it, but I'm pretty, pretty sure it wasn't, you know, it's definitely not for kids, I bet. Of course, Blade, that's a hard concept to do for kids. <laughs> Cause it's, you know, it's at times gory, messy, you know, he kills them because that you know kind of that's how you stop a vampire anyway um and then they talked about battle chasers which we talked about that a lot because it was super popular at the time and it's just you know the whole um joe i don't i don't know how to pronounce his last name i need to actually look that up and practice i guess (laughs) um joe m you know he has um he's the writer creator and he wanted control which i totally understand but at the same time, he only put out, like, nine issues, um, like, in 1998 through 2001. So people were kind of, like, you know, very. it was very sporadic, in other words. And people weren't really not okay with that. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they finally released, like, 9, 10, or 10, 11, 12 this year to, like, finish out the series. Because people were still wanting to know what happened. So they did, I think they did finally release those this year, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not positive, but I, I think I remember hearing about that. And then a Savage Dragon, and he actually did have his own cartoon for like two seasons um, in 1995, but they're like, uh, let's just pretend that didn't exist because apparently it was really bad. Like I, I never watched it because, you know, I didn't know about it. So, you know, and just an, an example of their humor wizard cast its own stupid movie so they're just you know all the staff is different um you know comic book characters not good comic book characters for a lot of them (laughs) like joke comic book characters so they talked about yeah um the avengers cartoon which this is like this is not the cast (laughs) like vision scarlet witch the hawkeye are in it um, and then Wonder Man, Ant Man, Wasp, Tigra, and I, I think that's it. Oh, and Falcon. Those are the characters that are in this cartoon. It's like Avengers United They Stand. Um, I mean, I watched it. it. It's okay, but, you know, without, like, it feels weird, I guess, especially now that we're used to the Avengers being, you know, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. Hulk, you know, Black Widow, we're used to these people who are not in this cartoon being on the Avengers, so it just seems weird to watch it now back and think, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> it To me, it felt more like the West Coast Avengers, especially um, with, like, Tigra and um, Wonder Man and stuff, like, being on it, because um, there was a definitely a point where you know, there was a West Coast Avengers title and they were a uh, part of it. And um, so, I mean, it didn't it didn't do that great. But they told the creators that they couldn't use Thor or Iron Man um, because they were, you know, and look like Hulk isn't even in this picture. But so that kind of limited also what they could do. I don't know why they told them that because they didn't do anything with them at the time. But anyway. 
So the the creator was excited because he's like, well, I'm going to introduce people to all these new characters and they're going to care about them. And it just didn't, it just didn't work. I don't know. <laughs> and Wanda, if you watch it, Wanda has that like accent, you know, the this thick kind of accent they can't quite place. Um, so that's interesting too. And then they had um, Spider-Man like unlimited, like Spider-Man, you know, the cartoon. I think it lasted one season and it was like an alternate earth where the high evolutionary was the bad guy. So and then another, like, TV thing, um, Witchblade, which this is Witchblade right here. They um, did a TNT series on that. It was, like, 13 episodes. And I actually, I think I remember watching that on TV. And she had her little, you know, her um, little gauntlet. But it was more like a bracelet at the time. And um, she didn't really, like, use it that much. I think they were leading up to her using it more in the, you know, next couple seasons. Um, unfortunately, in the last season, when she reveals her armor, it's actually armor, like medieval armor. And people didn't, you know, didn't like that. But of course, like, um, you couldn't really show stuff like this on like regular, basically TV at that time. So that's probably why they went with um, that you know, with medieval armor instead of um, this. And this is actually kind of even more covered up than she has been because I'm pretty sure there was one wizard cover where I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, this is, doesn't this cover doesn't seem appropriate for kids because uh, I don't know which, well, I think I'm pretty sure in the picture description, if you scroll, you can see the picture of her in that. So then you know which one it is. And then um, Fathom, um, she never got her animated series. Like, she was super popular for a while, yeah, but she never got hers either. Um, Spawn was supposed to get a live-action sequel. He didn't get one. And they're saying that X-Men has been confirmed to be, you know, in the works, which it, you know, premiered the next year. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, it says here Nicolas Cage has, you know, basically said, hey, I'm tired of being told, yeah, we're going to make this Superman movie. No, we're not going to make it. Yes, we are going to make it. So when you make a decision, let me know. And if you guys are serious, I'd love to do it. So basically, he kind of steps away from it. Um, and then, like, Big Boy, or Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot, that got uh, two seasons for a cartoon. And uh, let's see. And, yeah. So that's it for that. And let's see what's next. Oh, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you just because <laughs> it's funny to see, like, how far we've come. Just, like, old school toys right here. I say old school, but 1999, you know. But still, that's, like, the quality of toys at the time. They're not, like, super articulated or anything. And I remember these. <laughs> I did not get them, but I remember seeing them because there were other X Men items I wanted more, and of course I had a lim I had limited funds. But I remember seeing them because you know, of course, Rogue's my favorite. But at the same time, I'm like, well, would I rather get that, or would I rather get the Rogue and Gambit Age of Apocalypse famous couples action figures? I'm like, mm, well, so yeah, I got the Rogue and Gambit. Um, famous couples thing instead. <laughs> so um, in the next video, we're going to talk about some of the worst comic books, of, or like worst comic book storylines of the 80s and 90s, <laughs> which I read some of these and I was like, wow, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> or that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so um, I hope you join me for that video. Um, it's it's gonna be fun. I mean, some of these are like there's one I do not agree with at all, but um, yeah, they just think it's the worst. But I I think it's a I think it's a great issue. I I love. In fact, that's one of my favorites. But anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about if you uh, join me for that video, which I hope you do. So um, until next time, bye.